Hello and welcome back to the second match of the second round of the second group stages. Lots of seconds there uh, for the World Cup of Pokemon VGC, sponsored by Elgato. Uh, I'm still going to be Jamie Boyd. I'm still going to be joined by Costa Dynamos. And we are going to be jumping into the match between Chile and Bolivia. Chile and Bolivia, very, very exciting teams. Uh, I feel like they've been able to absolutely uh, take advantage of this event, and they've essentially gotten a lot of team building uh, strategies going, which have actually worked out very, very well. And um, honestly, I think it's very good um, representation of uh, the Latin American community too, uh, being able to have them up front here and just get, putting on a great show, both for us as well, like, you know, the casters, viewers, um, but more importantly for themselves too so they could essentially just enjoy the vgc um uh, you know like play styles that they're able to bring up to the front but of course we're just going to be going ahead have a bit of a nosy to see the group situation which other teams are involved and oh wait what mr jeremy boy that's a very uh, wild united kingdom i see there yeah and so i like to see that that first position even though it's like kind of tied with brazil but yeah yeah very very interested in this game for for multiple reasons especially because they are in the same group stages as the united kingdom of course yeah. so we'll have to see how this match is going to be affecting the the chile versus bolivia end results of course we're going to be against brazil uh, so uh, we could be deciding who's, who's going through in the second week at this point as well so uh, definitely going to be crucial going into this game between chile and bolivia Oh, 100%. As we do have uh, a match that has actually been played out uh, in between these two uh, countries, uh, which uh, Chile were able to go ahead and win 2-0 Cristobal versus Victor there in a battle of swords, uh, from what it looks like, or should I say, wolves wielding swords uh, of those two Zashians being used with a bit of a change up in the team composition uh, choices that they both opted to go for. But um, very interesting, nevertheless, as uh, I think I had a bit of a sneak peek as well, where there may be a Zacian coming up again. Yeah, and we'll have to uh, look at the teams of these two players here uh, to see what they are going to be running. Of course, you did get that sneak preview, and we did see that the Xerneas is going to be the Pokemon, uh, the restricted Pokemon of choice coming out for Alejandro here. Alongside that, Incineroar, Entei, Ninetales, Alolan, and Amoongus and Gastrodon. So the Ninetales is definitely an interesting Pokemon coming out. Yeah, I mean, Ninetales has a lot of uh, things going for it in the current meta right now. It's got that ice typing. It's got a very good speed tiering as well. And let's not forget, it does bring the hail so uh you do definitely want that to kind of disrupt any sort of weather teams going around i don't know let's say uh Kyoga or even that groudon team so i personally do really like it because it has a lot of options for it you do have a roar avail and even speed control support that could go with it so uh i do find it actually quite interesting that alejandro was uh thinking to bring it with a xerneas team maybe to try to further bulk out his team as we do have that gashed on there which i find to be a very interesting pick as well yeah you've got, you've got the fire types to be able to deal with the, the zashins that you can see and then nine tails and gashed mm. support those fire types very well uh, because you can deal with something like the ground types with the blizzards that can come out from the nine tails and the storm drain that can come out from the gastrodon as well so yeah, yeah. De definitely some 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 cool synergy coming out from alejandro's team and we'll have to see if it is good enough to break through uh, the team coming out here uh, for their opponent from chile You're going to be rocking that zashin as we've already seen uh, sergio mm. is going to be running that zashin raichu uh, the galarian zapdos coming out so another interesting pick uh, the Suicune, mm. Serena, and the Volcarona. Yeah, so a bit of a change up of uh, uh, composition here for the Zashian's team. Uh, Zashian team, sorry. Uh, you don't actually commonly see Galarian Zapdos as much. I do think that it has been essentially uh, finding a better position in the current meta right there. It does have a defiant uh, ability, which of course does scare off any opposing intimidates. It is uh, reasonably good going up against that Incineral Rillaboom uh, call, which of course has been going everywhere, even that Urshifu rapid strike there. So it has a lot, it makes a lot of sense accompanied by uh you know speed control modes and even redirection so i do really like sergio's team a lot of disruption got the fake out of the raichu even a, maybe a cheeky nuzzle there uh serena just absolutely blocks off all priority so you definitely want that and then of course you have the heavy hitter that being the zashian if positioned well enough it could just essentially win you the game immediately 
Yeah, so quite quite an anti-meta kind of Zashin team coming out from mm. Sergio here. Uh, the, the Zapdos, like you said, it does deal with the, the very common triple core uh, of the Incineroar, Rillaboom, and Urshifu. Not even the most common triple core, actually, but that, that's uh, Incineroar, Rillaboom, and Regieleki that is the most common three Pokemon paired together. But even mm. so, the Raichu just protects the Zapdos from that Regieleki very well with the Lightning Rod. So, yeah, yeah some very, very cool picks coming out from both these players. I'm very excited to see uh, how they're going to fare in this match. Yeah, as we are going to be seeing it from uh, the perspective... Oh, I do apologize. Jamie, save me here right now. Uh, I've lost track. Of Alejandro, yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, yes, of Alejandro playing for Chile here. So uh, in this matchup, of course, Zashian has that advantage over Xerneas. It's so it's uh, going to be a lot about positioning, but I think you made a very good note as well about this, Jamie. The fire type. So you've got Incineroar and Entei. Entei, as we can see, of course, does have that choice stuff. So it will be outspeeding the Zashian and directly threatening it. So maybe Sergio might opt to bring the Suicune in this situation, maybe get a Tailwind up and get that speed control on their side of the field. And Suicune would still be awkward into that Gastrodon, though, because uh, they would put a stop to... It would pretty much just be snarling at that point, maybe Icy Winding if it carries that attack as well, because you would put a stop to any of the Scalds that can come out. Uh, but yeah, you do need to be relying on the Fire types, and the Amoongus as well uh, does very well against the Zashin teams, because if the, Z the Zashin can't even hit the Xerneas in the first place, uh, the, Z okay. the Xerneas is able to potentially come out on top there. It does take a couple of turns to be able to break through, uh, with the boosted uh, Dazzling Gleams and Moonblast still being resisted, uh, but still yeah. being very very strong as well so we'll have to see how, how well that Xerneas can be supported uh, even if the Xerneas comes to the match some players opt to not even bring their Xerneas when they see a Zashian we'll have to see if that is going to be the case going into this match yeah, exactly, uh, because, of course, it may just need that additional, uh, you know, like, counter, uh, you know, Pokemon that you need to bring that situation as a Xerneas can actually be a bit of a bundle and a wasted slot if you have such a bad matchup. But, of course, we are going to be going into game one of this match, Chile versus Bolivia. We've got, uh, we've got uh, Sergio leading with that Galarian Zapdos and that Zashian crowned, whilst over on Alejandro's side, we've got the Entei and a Moongus. So it looks like the Moongus wants to be putting some things to sleep here, and you only need one more Z over on the on Sergio's side of the field for, for that sleep, so uh, yeah. it could be just going for the spores as well. We'll have to see if the Zapdos is carrying the safety goggles uh, as the item of choice. That would make it very strong into the opposing Amoongus. Uh, but this is, the Entei is looking in a pretty good position right now. It's facing down the, the Zashin, which is the Pokemon it wants to be facing down. It could also be going for the Sacred Fires even into the Zapdos at this point, and if you do snag that burn onto the Zapdos, that would be cutting its attack severely, so uh, yeah. A very, very good lead for the Entei here. We'll have to see uh, if it's able to outpace both those Pokemon as well. It's got the same natural speed as the uh, opposing Zapdos, and Zashin definitely doesn't want to be taking a fire move here, so it is just going to be protecting itself. Exactly, it does cover for the potential of that Entei being choice scuffed, which is so, so uh, predominant in the current meta, as the Brave Bird does come out right now. We'll deal over half of HP's worth onto that Entei, as for its troubles, it will be put to sleep right now, unless, of course, we do see a Lumberry proc, but uh, at the current moment, I don't see that, so it was able to deal a lot of damage onto that Entei, but it, we've got a situation where Zashian might be scared enough to actually switch out here. And the Entei just going for that Flare Blitz immediately. Uh, could be holding that Choice Scarf to take care of the Zashin uh, while outpacing it and just knocking it out. F Sacred Fire usually isn't strong enough to knock out the Zashin. Flare Blitz definitely could be. So uh, could be opting for the quick knockout on the Zashin. Maybe having that Xerneas waiting in the back to just set out the Geomancy once the Zashin is taken care of. And at this point, with the Zapdos definitely going to be sleeping this turn, uh, you can feel pretty safe for the Entei. You can either just go for the Rage Powder uh, to redirect the attack that isn't going to be coming out from the Zashin that is switching out in the Suicune, or you can just healing yourself with a pollen puff instead that shiny Suicune is coming in right now looking very nice as well as taking the damage very nicely too as of course it does resist there with that water typing Entei does take a bit more damage there uh, but uh, the Amoongus right now is the real question of what it does and like you said Jamie the pollen puff is out right now fully supporting that Entei being able to skyrocket its HP or should I say remaining HP back up to 156 so very good right now you want to try to keep that Entei uh, healthy but of course it doesn't essentially light the situation up against Suikun there yeah, you want to be facing down the opposing Zashin, and now that has switched out, I wouldn't be surprised if that Entei does switch out. Uh, whether that's just into a, another Pokemon, but it could be the Gastrodon coming in to take a potential score that's coming out, but no, it's just going to be the Xerneas instead, but that's definitely a very good switch, and especially if this Zapdos stays asleep. 
Oh, exactly. So Sergio's hoping for that wake up is not able to get it, unfortunately, for their side of the field. As Suikun will now be going for the tailwind. And guess what? Yes, you guessed it correctly. The spore from the Amundes comes out yet again. So essentially, this uh, Amundes has been left to its own devices to just go ahead and get that sleep status afflicted onto most of Sergio's Pokemon right now, whilst Xerneas is in a very free spot to get that Geomancy going. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see that Geomancy, but it's come down to what this Amoongus wants to do. Because uh, if you do go for the Rage Powder and you're not holding a Cobra Berry, then you're just going to be probably knocked out by that Zapdos. If you are holding the Cobra Berry, then you do just get to sit in front of the fa in, in front of this Zapdos. Uh, just mm -hmm. go for any of the attacks, really. Just go for the Pollen Puff if you're expecting the Brave Bird to go into the Xerneas. Or try and Spore again into the, the Suicune. That would be a very good catch uh, of the oh. Sashin switching in here. It may be, and it makes a lot of sense, uh, that play, uh, Jamie, as you don't have much to lose there, but Alejandro opts to go for the switch out. Wants to reposition in case the Zacian does appear as Zapdos actually wakes up. The Brave Bird will be coming out from the Zapdos into the Entei slot, but is not enough to go ahead and pick off that KO with a critical hit. It definitely would have, and we have a scenario right now where the Geomancy is up, Jamie. Uh, this Zapdos is going to be shivering in its boots right now as it is directly threatened by this boosted Xerneas and the Entei essentially checkmates this uh, Zacian unless of course the Flare Blitz uh, recoil is something that Alejandro has to take into consideration. Oh, but that Suicune coming into play, even though it's sleeping, even though it's off the field now, it did set up the Tailwind. So uh, the Zapdos and the Zacian still should be outspeeding both the Pokemon uh, on Alejandro's side of the field oh, yeah. here. So yeah, the Behemoth, the Behemoth Blade should just be able to knock out the Xerneas. You don't have the Amoongus next to it at the moment to be able to get that Rage Powder going. Uh, the Entei is going to be Choice Scarfed here, so you just get a free target into that slot uh, with the Zapdos as well. So even if it switches out into the Amoongus to try and get that redirection, you're still going to be taking a Brave Bird in that slot. It would have to be the final Pokemon for Alejandro's side of the field uh, to be switching in, but Brave Bird is still going to do a lot of damage to any of the Pokemon that would switch in. It looks like instead we're just going to be taking Ooh. the Brave Bird here uh, into that Entei that did not switch out, and there was no Protect from the Xerneas. No Protect from the Xerneas. The Entei is now down and out for the count in Game 1, and Behemoth Blade from that Zacian is essentially unblocked completely um, as it goes for that very free KO with the Behemoth Blade. Perhaps Alejandro was having the same mindset as myself and i completely forgot the tailwind there um quite unfortunate as uh they will now be left with that amundus and the incineral versus a defiant boosted uh delirian zapdos and that zacian yeah, that's not the Pokemon you wanted as your fourth facing down the uh, the Galarian Zapdos there are going no. to be getting that Defiant boost. Uh, you're going to be even stronger against the Amoongus, even stronger against the Incineroar at this point. Sure, you get the Intimidate onto the Zacian, that can just switch out and reset it if it wants to. Uh, or it could just stay in and start attacking. A neutral Zacian is still very strong. And yeah, yeah the, the Suicune coming in clutch there. All it needed to do was set up that Tailwind, and then it just negates the, the speed boost from the Geomancy uh, from the Xerneas. You needed either the Incineroar on the field to be able to fake out the Zacian, or the Amoongus on the field to get that Rage Powder going. But if you just let your Xerneas get hit by the Behemoth Blade, um, mm -hmm. it takes a, a lot of a really heavy investment to be able to survive the, the Behemoth Blade from the Zacian. Uh, so yeah, you, you do need that extra support to get it going. Uh, Entei is a very good answer to Zacian when it outspeeds, and the Choice Scarf usually does allow it to do that, but because of that Tailwind, uh, that option was just taken away completely. Yeah, as we do uh, actually have the Tarina being revealed here on Sergio's side of the field, and Amundes opts to go for the Protect. So the Galarian Zapdos, uh, not falling for that trick there, goes for the Brave Bird into the Incineroar slot there, will be dealing a lot of damage. Not enough to pick up a KO, but the Incineroar, now that Tarina's on the field, it is still weak to that Fire Typing that takes a lot of damage, but doesn't get KO'd as that stands the same for the Incineroar remaining on 8 HP from the recoil. And very nice targeting from the Zapdos catching that Incineroar. If they did, they did go for Rage Powder of the Amoongus, you're taking the Brave Bird anyway. And uh, yeah, not able to go to the fight for the fighting moves at least because we have seen that it did outspeed the Zacian, so it would mm -hmm. be holding that Choice Scarf at that point. Uh, but Brave Bird was all you needed, especially when you've been given the Defiant Boost as well, uh, especially with Serena in the back uh, to be able to take on the Amoongus, uh, immune to those spores, uh, and going to be able to threaten some big damage with the Triple Axel. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that, that shows why you really need to support your Xerneas to be able to be 
beat the beat the Zashin teams. Uh, just one one slight um, misstep with the support and the yep. Zashin hitting the Xerneas with the Behemoth Blade just takes it out completely. So uh, you do need to get those Intimidates down. You need to get the fake outs going so the Xerneas is free to attack that turn. You need the Amoongus next to the uh, Xerneas to be able to get those Rage Powders going. Uh, there was an opportunity if the Amoongus did go for the Spore into the Suicune, it would have caught the Zashin on the switch in and it would have stayed asleep and then you just yep. sweep with your Xerneas at that point. So uh, switching out there back into the Entei and uh, maybe, maybe did forget about that Tailwind at that point uh, because you did need something not the Entei, either the Incinera or Amoongus next to the Xerneas mm -hmm. to be able to deal with the Zashian. So uh, yeah, you definitely need to be supporting your Xerneas a bit better in that in the next game. Well, yeah, exactly, because uh, Alejandro's left with the position where uh, both of the main sweepers were gone and you were just left with both supporters. So you need to have that support on the side, like you said, Jamie. The spore, when and uh, leaving that Amundus in on the field, could have uh, just paid a lot of uh, uh, dividends uh, to that gameplay right there because you're still protecting uh, that Xerneas with the Rage Powders there, of course, as we are going to be heading into the next game right now. So we can try to go ahead and see how um, Sergio is going to be able to try to bring this back right now. Oh, sorry, apologies. Alejandro is going to try to bring this back right now because Sergio has got all of the pressure and momentum on their side of the field. Yeah, but Alejandro definitely did have the pieces to, to be able to break through that game. Now, the Xerneas did mm. manage to get the Geomancy up in a pretty good position, but as soon as the Entei was the Pokemon next to the Xerneas instead of the Incineroar or Amoongus waiting in the back, uh, then that pretty much sealed the Xerneas' fate at that point. So it just needs a little bit better positioning going into this next game yeah. uh, so that that Xerneas can be supported a bit better. It's going to be very, very good into that uh, Glare and Zapdos, especially because it is holding that Choice Scarf. It can't go for a Protect or anything like that, so as soon as you get that Geomancy up, uh, with no Tailwind on the Suicune either, and then you just get a mm -hmm. knockout in that case. Uh, we'll have to see if there's any other moves on the Suicune. Uh, they do very commonly carry the Snarl that would be able to put a stop to the Xerneas as well. Uh, sometimes yep. carrying Raw to just be able to get rid of that Xerneas after it's got the Geomancy boost. Uh, but the Tailwind was the, the move of choice that uh, the Suicune only needed in that game. It allowed the yep. Zashin to outspeed the Xerneas. If you can prevent that Tailwind somehow, uh, then that would be very, very free for the Xerneas to get when it's got that Geomancy up to just start going for those attacks. Uh, but there's not really too many ways of breaking through that Suicune pretty easily. It does look like uh, Alejandro would need to rely on the Xerneas, especially if Incineroar, Entei, and Amoongus are the Pokemon that's brought to the match. You really need that Xerneas to break through the Suicune. And if you don't break, break through it pretty easily, it's just going to be able to get that Tailwind up once again. Yeah, as we are going to be getting the leads in this game too, we have Sergio bringing that Suicune up front actually, paired up with the Galarian Zapdos, as we see the same leads coming out from Alejandro's side, the Entei and Amundus. Yeah, this is a very good uh, position for the Amoongus if it's carrying that Cobra Berry, so uh, you'd be able to take the Brave Birds, get the Spore off into the Suicune. Uh, the Entei would only really be threatened by the Skulls here, but then that means the Suicune is not getting up the Tailwind at this point. Uh, the yeah. Zapdos did opt for the Brave Bird into that uh, Entei in the first game. We saw how much damage it did. It would still be doing very good damage here, but instead the Entei is not going to go on the offensive here. You can get that switch out into the Xerneas because facing down the Suicune and the Zapdos, you're not really too threatened. No, so the Zapdos is now going for the Brave Bird, and like you said, Jamie, we do actually see a reveal of the Cobra Berry on that Amundus there. We'll be able to essentially guarantee that it does not get KO'd. That does so much damage, even through the Cobra Berry there. Quite fascinating, actually, as the Tailwind will now be set up from that Suicune for Sergio's side for the next following turns, as we do have Spore. Landing into the Zapdos there. So a bit of slow play here from Alejandro. I think he's recognized that he needs to try to slow play this and maybe try to get as many spores off as possible. As a Suicune, I feel like it either leaves or it goes for the Snarl here. Yeah, it was a very good sport to get off with uh, on this first turn. Uh, Suicune can't get a knockout in, in this position. The best it could do uh, would be able to go for the Snarl just to reduce the Xerneas' damage output mm. because it is going to get this Geomancy up this turn if it just clicks it. Uh, the Suicune would be able to go for a Roar to be able to stop that, but then yeah. if the Amoongus goes for a Spore, then that just puts the Suicune to sleep before it can go for that Roar. You get to keep your Geomancy at that point. So yeah. uh, if you do make that, if you go for the Spore into the Suicune and Geomancy, you guarantee that you get it up. Uh, just be, depending on whether you want to just accept the Snarl that could come out as well. But at the same time, we saw the Zashin just switch in in the face of the Amoongus. You could be potentially catching that switch in with the Spore as well. 
Yeah, you definitely could, as we do see the Zashian's Intrepid Sword activate, being able to give itself a plus one boost in attack, as actually the Amundus decides to switch out a very well timed from Alejandro, as uh, we'll be able to get that Zashian now back down to neutral and have the fake out pressure on the field for the following turn. But the uh, Suicune, very free to go for the Snarl right there, will be dropping the Xerneas' special attack now down to minus one, as the Xerneas doesn't matter it doesn't care too much about it doesn't go for the geomancy just wants to try to get that bit of chip damage through the use of the dazzling gleam there interesting play from Alejandro that was a free geomancy if they chose to go for it uh, but maybe just expecting the Zashin to come in in that tailwind uh, even if you've got the geomancy you're going to be outsped at that point accepting mm -hmm. you're going to be snarled as well maybe not wanting to use up the geomancy when you have the opportunity to be snarled by the Suicune uh, but really you have to break through the Xerneas uh, break through the Suicune sorry with the Xerneas and yep. if you're being snarled at that point you're not going for the geomancies. You're not going to be able to put on the pressure to that Suicune. Uh, sweet it can just go for those snarls as, for as long as it wants. The Incineroar is not putting on too much pressure uh, at this point. The Zashin is still outspeeding, so uh, it's going to be able to just get those Behemoth Blades off or the close combats or whatever fighting move it will want to go for. And even if it gets faked out by the Incineroar this turn, it doesn't really matter because Xerneas wasn't putting on any pressure, but Entei definitely would. Yeah, as we do see it uh, being brought here, Sacred Sword, though, does uh, guarantee a bit buff of hate, half HP's worth on that Incineroar, but it gets doubled up with the Scold, picking up the KO. Incineroar is out for the count in Game 2. So, very solid play from Sergio there, absolutely ignoring the Xerneas, as, of course, it was of no threat there. Yeah, it wasn't really doing any damage there at all. Uh, if it stayed in, it could have been Snarled again to be put uh, even weaker. It wasn't doing any damage to the Zashin. Uh, could have been uh, taken out with just the Behemoth Blade at that point. So, uh, yeah, just taking out the Incineral, the Sacred Sword. Uh, not the move, common move of choice, the fighting move of choice on Zashin. Uh, close combat uh, is usually brought over that Sacred Sword, but still strong enough in this case with the follow-up Scald. So that's the Intimidate gone from the um, Alejandro side of the field. The Fake Out is no longer an option. It really just has to be the, this Amoongus that is able to get that Xerneas into position. You've got the Entei on the field at this point. You can just redirect uh, with the Amoongus at this point. And you, if you land of Flurbits into the Zashin, that would still free up the Xerneas. Uh, even if they uh, lose their Zashin, you still have to contend with the Snarls at least. At least not for this turn, since the Suicune is going to be switching out into that Zapdos. Yeah, so the Zapdos coming back onto the field, of course it is still asleep as the Protect is going to be uh, coming up from this Zashian there, uh, allowing itself to stay on the field in anticipation of that Flare Blitz and, uh, oh, sorry, no, sorry, uh, the Flare Blitz, I got a bit ahead of myself there, going into that slot as, of course, the Moon Guess tried to go for the spawn into the Suicune slot there, the Zapdos already being asleep means it does not affect it. Yeah, and that's the Tailwind gone as well, so this Entei should be outspeeding this Sashian at this point, so should be able to pick up the knockout, but then uh, you got rid of the Intimidate at this point, you want to switch out your Zashian at some point to get rid of that Intimidate drop, and Suicune is a perfect switch in into the Entei Flare Blitz at this point. It uh, does have to contend with the possibility of doubling up into that Zashian with a Spore as well, uh, that would put us the, the Suicune to sleep, but at the same time, that's definitely a worthy sacrifice, as that is going to be the case. The Suicune is switching in, uh, but it's not going to be threatened by this Entei and Amoongus too much, so even if it goes to sleep, it's not going to be too much of an issue for Sergio. As the Flare Blitz will be going into that slot, deals a good bit of chip damage there, but the more important question is, does the Zapdos wake up or not? It does not, unfortunately, for Sergio's side of the field, uh, which will, of course, mean the Spore is ever so free into that, which is now Suicune slot there. It has not been able to move, so it is guaranteed to be sleeping in this new uh, turn upcoming. And could be seeing another Xerneas switch in here for Alejandro. They did like to switch in against the opposing Zapdos and Suicune. It's put, made a lot more free because of the sleeps at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, Zapdos does have the opportunity to wake up, uh, could get that Brave Bird. Even into the Xerneas would do, be doing some very good damage because uh, the Entei is not really going to be doing too much this Suicune. It would need to go for the Flevitz into that Zapdos. Uh, that would still probably uh, get the two hit knockout on the remaining HP it has at the moment. And uh, that definitely could be uh, opening up this Xerneas as well because it is going to be switching in for that Amoon. If both the Pokemon on Sergio's side of the field stay asleep, that Entei could be picking up the knockout on that Zapdos with two Flare Blitz, then you can get your Geomancy up with the Xerneas. 
Exactly, as the Entei does stay in, it goes for the Flare Blitz there and just barely misses out from the KO. Does Zapdos wake, it, wake up? It, does. it goes for the Brave Bird. Will it be opting to go for the Entei? No, it actually goes for the Xerneas slot, but deals so much damage, enough to even pick itself up and get the KO from that recoil, as Suicune does, of course, take that guaranteed turn of sleep. But... Uh, Tailwind does uh, essentially seem to be over, Jamie, if I'm not mistaken, and Suicune is still asleep. Yeah, you need to be setting up that Tailwind with the Suicune. It does have the opportunity to wake up now. It's burned its first turn of sleep. Uh, so yeah. if you do get that Tailwind up, uh, that would be really beneficial for the Zashin at this point. But if Zashin hits the field now, uh, it's just going to be taken out by the Flare Blitz because it's taken some damage. So definitely should be in range of the Flare Blitz coming out from the Entei. Because there's no Tailwind, the Entei would get that Flare Blitz first. So you probably have to switch into your other Pokemon uh, to mm -hmm. be able to uh, uh, try and take on the Xerneas and Entei a little bit better. But if that was the Serena, which we saw in the previous game, that's also not going to want to take a flare blitz so the Xerneas has positioned itself very well into this game it's going to be Ooh. the Serena waiting in the back if that's able to survive a flare blitz coming out from the Entei uh, that could open up the opportunity to get a power whip into the Xerneas and that may be enough to pick up the knockouts uh, yeah. at this point but really you just get to flare blitz that Serena you get to click Geomancy with the Xerneas and the Suicune mm -hmm. has the opportunity to wake up uh, it really does need to go for the Tailwind if it does wake up Snarl would yeah. be nice to reduce the damage from the Xerneas but that doesn't free up the Zashin to take care of the Entei at that point so yeah. you've got to be hoping uh, for Sergio uh, if you're on Sergio's side of the field it, you, that you do wake up that Suicune to get that Tailwind because if you don't this turn flare blitz mm -hmm. should probably still be enough to knock out the Serena and then you've still got the Zashin not in Tailwind that would be open to the Entei's Flare Blitz. As the Entei will be doing just that, goes for the Flare Blitz and picks up the KO. Serena is out nearly as quickly as it came onto the field. Entei will be taking that recoil damage. Xerneas, uh, in turn, of course, will be going for the Geomancy boost, being able to skyrocket its special attack, special defense, and its speed. Plus two stages right now. Um, Suicune has to go for the Tailwind, but more importantly, it has to wake up right now. It definitely needs to in order to try f uh, to get this game back in for Sergio's Ooh. favor, but it does not, which means this is a very good comeback from what it looks like at the minute, unless, of course, casters uh, are jinx or whatnot. Un uh, I don't even remember the term, uh, Jamie, but essentially, <laughs> the Zashian is on the field right now, and it is not faster than both the Entei and Xerneas. I believe commentator's curse is the there phrase you're we looking for you. there. Uh, but <laughs> at, th at this point, uh, the Suicune has taken a reasonable amount of damage. Uh, you just need to go for the Moonblast into the Suicune. It's almost certainly going to be enough at this point. You just go for the Flare Blitz into the Zashin. It's going to be enough at this point so because it has taken that little bit of chip. And this is a super bulky Zashin. Uh, mm -hmm. But even then, at that point, you're going to lose the Suicune to the Moonblast. And even if the Zashin survives, you just pick it off with the Moonblast uh, at this point. Uh, it's going to be protecting here. You've got to hope the Suicune's able to survive the turn and get out that Tailwind. Mm -hmm. But this is a move blast is going to be very strong. Yeah, and it will be going to the Suicune, and it will be picking up the KO, which means, of course, Alejandro is able to go ahead and uh, force this into a three-game affair. Of course, Flare Blitz cannot miss, unlike its counterpart, Sacred Fire, signature move, of course, from that Entei. So this game is pretty much wrapped up. Yeah, and it shows exactly what happens when the Xerneas does not get hit by the Behemoth Blade. So it's, it's even uh, able to just Moonblast this session. Look how much damage it does. Uh, it's so much damage for a resisted hit, and the Flare Blitz is just able to uh, pick up the remaining HP on that Zashian. So yeah, definitely yeah. definitely a very strong adjustment coming out for Alejandro there. Uh, getting that Xerneas into a position where it was able to Geomancy. Did have the opportunity to earlier in the match, but opting for the Dazzle Gleam instead. Uh, really didn't do too much damage Mm -hmm. until that turn uh, but that meant that you didn't use up the geomancy you could use yep. it later on in the game uh, so actually a very smart play coming out uh, for, uh, for alejandro they're going for that dazzling gleam even though it looked like it wasn't uh, achieving too much that turn uh, thinking the turns ahead so that they could get that geomancy up in the late game which is yep. when they need to get it up because uh, when that sweeping stayed asleep there was no way back for for sergio in that game so I think it will be a very good shout to call a moon just being uh, the MVP right there and uh, essentially trying to rally up uh, this win for Alejandro's side, essentially forcing that game three. So uh, like you said, Jamie, I think it's just being able to utilize that Amundis and uh, force those sleeps seems to be the game plan for Alejandro. So I'm very curious to see if uh, we can see a comeback from Sergio for that strategy.
Yeah, the Cobra Berry is a very good item choice against that Galarian Zapdos, so uh, it's not even an opportunity to pick up the one-hit knockout on that Moongus. It's usually able to survive a Zacian's Behemoth Blade even uh, coming out, so uh, maybe the Volcarona would be able to deal with the uh, deal with the Amoongus. Uh, you do have to contend with the Entei possibly carrying Stone Edge as well at that point, uh, but based on the four Pokemon that were brought, Volcarona is actually pretty reasonable into those Pokemon, especially if it is that Quiver Dance set. Even if it's going to be just the full supportive set, are uh, you able to just redirect that Entei uh, into the Volcarona, so that would free up the Zashin as well. So uh, Volcarona definitely could be a potential Pokemon uh, going into this game three. It would do very well, especially if it's the Quiver Dance set. It would just need to mm. avoid that Stone Edge that could come out from the Entei. And then you could just play the game, uh, just trying to focus down that Entei very hard. If you are, yep. and, and if you just get some Quiver Dances up, it'll be very hard to break through that Volcarona. So. And we do, had seen that Serena waiting in the back for game one and two. Uh, so potentially that's the Pokemon that could be dropped for that Volcarona. I pr don't think the Raichu is probably the Pokemon to come to this game, mm. especially with the Entei still outspeeding. If you get a Nuzzle into the Entei, that would be reasonable, uh, but it wouldn't be doing too much otherwise. Uh, maybe getting the Nuzzle into the Xerneas uh, is an alternate way of uh, slowing it down so that Zashin can Behemoth Blade instead of getting the Tailwind up with the Suicune. Yeah. Uh, but Volcarona is, would definitely be a strong Pokemon going into this game three. I think it would be. I think that's a very good shout because Volcarona has, it essentially threatens that Amundus. It needs to, uh, Surgeon needs to try to get rid of that pesky little mushroom as best as possible. So Amundus just seemed to be a really good shout right now, wanting to afflict those sleeps in order to open up the game for the Xerneas and the Entei, of course, as we are going to be going into this crucial game three between these two great trainers right now. I've been loving the action from both sides as we're going to be seeing Sergio lead with the Galarian Zapdos and Champion, apparently, um, with the Shiny Suicune, which I love so much. And on the other side, we are going to be seeing Alejandro with a good old-fashioned um, Amundus and Xerneas lead, uh, giving a shout-out to older formats, of course, as well. And there's not really too much that can stop just a Spore and a Geomancy at this point. Uh, you may just want to go for the offensive attack, expecting the Snarl again, like uh, happened in game two. You could just go for the Moonblast into the Zapdos, with Brave Bird Recoil adding up on it as well. Even if you get Snarled, you'll probably knock out the Zapdos. And Xerneas is probably going to be outspeeding this week in turn one anyway, so you'd be able to take out that Zapdos uh, before you even attack. Uh, but you do have the opportunity to go for the Spore and Geomancy here. Because that Code Berry is on the Amoongus, you're guaranteed to get a Spore into that Zapdos slot. Unless it switches into the Serena, uh, but then Serena's then Suicune is not really threatening down so then it's too much, so you wouldn't be concerned in that case because you can just start pollen puffing yourself. So mm -hmm. really you can just get that spore going onto the Zapdos that is going oh, for oh. that Brave Bird once again into that Amoongus. Yeah, so no redirection, no protects, of course. Brave Bird comes out, deals so much damage, enough, of course, to push it just uh, beneath half HP's worth of it. As the Geomancy opts to go for the... G uh, oh, sorry, not the Geomancy. I'm so used to saying that word. The Xerneas opts to go for the Geomancy right there. Suicune would make a lot of sense to try to go for uh, that Tailwind to try to make sure that the Zacian can be brought in. But, of course, the Amoongus is such a threat. It's just going to be able to go ahead and get that Spore off onto the Zapdos as we do indeed. A confirmation of the Tailwind being set up. And uh, in this scenario, I think Alejandro's just played very well. Oh, actually opted to go for the Suicune instead as Xerneas uh, doesn't feel as threatened from the Zapdos from what it seems. Yeah, so uh, now the Amoongus could be KO'd to a Brave Bird at that point. You could have gone for the Spore into the Zapdos. That means that Amoongus and Xerneas definitely survived the turn. So we can get a, a Snarl off, sure, but um, then you're still going to be boosted and still being able to do some very good damage, but opting to st put a stop to those Snarls instead. Uh, that means the Amoongus does need to switch out if it wants to survive or go for that Protect as well. Uh, but then you've got to switch into your Incineroar that would be uh, boosting up the Zapdos and doing really a, a lot of damage with the Brave Bird, especially if it targets into the Xerneas. Uh, or you're switching into that Entei, but the Tailwind is up. So if you get the KO with your Xerneas here onto the Zapdos, then that gives the switch in into the Zacian. And if Entei is next to the Xerneas, it, you're mm. going to have to pivot a bit more to get that um, Xerneas supported as well. But it's oh, going to be the Amoongus switching out into that Entei there. 
Yeah, so it's uh, Alejandro opting to get that regenerator going for him, being able to recover a bit of HP there, and of course not get KO'd from that Brave Bird, that Entei, even though it's still surviving, it did not take it that well, as the Dazzling Gleam will ensure the KO onto the Zapdos and deal a lot of damage, enough damage actually, uh, to uh, onto that Suicune to get a proc from its Citrus Berry, as the Suicune is still asleep. Yeah, that's the, the KO on the Zapdos, though, so you do get the switch in into that Zacian. Uh, that would be in Tailwind now, not going to be threatened by that Entei, uh, at least before it attacks. So uh, you could yeah. get the knockout onto the Entei with whatever attack you'd want to go for with the Zacian at this point. Uh, because it has taken so much damage from the Brave Bird, uh, you got to wonder if the Xerneas is going to be going for the Protect and the Switch out into mm. either the Incineral or Amoongus at this point. Amoongus has got some Regenerator going uh, to be able to put it back into a, a very good amount of HP. Uh, but... At the same time, like if you if the Zenish just goes on the offensive as you switch out into the Pokemon, you expect that and target into that supportive Pokemon. Are you going to be taking a huge amount of damage once again? We saw how much damage the Moonblast did to that Zashin. It is able to pick yeah. up the two shot uh, on the Zashin there. So it's still a little bit of a mind game going into this turn because that NT is next to the Zenish. If it was the Amoongus mm -hmm. and the Incineroar, you just get to support that Zenish pretty well. But uh, now you've got to play as a, whether you're expecting the Zenish to go for that Protect and try and take out the NT, or if you try and uh, catch that Zenish going on the offensive, you can take take it out of the Zashin, but then at the same time, you'd be sacrificing it to that Flare Blitz that could come out from the Entei. So definitely going to be an interesting turn. Yeah, as the Entei does indeed uh, switch out for that Incineral, which means the Zashin will now be have its attack drop back down to neutral, um, essentially rendering its Intrepid Sword useless in this scenario. As the Behemoth Blade, no protect actually from the Xerneas. Oh my lord, this may be a read here. Oh, oh, oh. as the Behemoth nice. Blade goes into the Incineral slot, Alejandro just going for the damage and saying, sure, Sergio. I'll play your game and I will not ignore, uh, sorry, I will completely ignore that Zashin with a very threatening sword of steel as it nearly picks up the KO on uh, Suicune, but more importantly, it's able to pick it off right now. So very, very smart and well established a read there. Yeah, very, very strong play coming out from the, the Xerneas there. Uh, the Suicune has to switch out into the Serena since it would just be KO'd to the Zacian Gleam at this point. You get to fake out the Zacian, or not apparently. Oh. The Behemoth Blade is just going to be coming out from the Zacian. Oh my lord, it goes into the Xerneas this time round. Doesn't oh. pick up the KO! The Intimidate proving why it is so, so crucial. Dazzling Gleam yet again coming out, and yes, you guessed it, no fake out because there's a Flare Blitz coming. It is targeting the Zacian, and it is wiping it out. Oh, of this game three absolutely phenomenal play from alejandro there just going for all of that momentum and being able to successfully uh, get those very good plays out there see why the, the Xerneas uh, felt comfortable going for those attacks because so, it was able to survive that Behemoth Blade. Uh, probably trained to be able to do that factoring in that Intimidate onto the Zacian. Uh, yeah. So yeah, able to take that Behemoth Blade. Now you get the, the KO onto it. Uh, the Suicune is still sleeping. The Tailwind is gone. Serena's taken so much damage at this point. You just get to click Dazzle and Gleam and the Xerneas is going to take the game. So uh, yeah, definitely a, a complete change from that game one. The Xerneas wasn't supported too well. Uh, just went on the offensive with the Entei next to it and just got taken out immediately by the behemoth plate and yeah definitely a good good adjustment going into this game two and the game three start waiting until later on in the game in the game two to get the geomancy uh, getting that late game geomancy was very strong getting a very much earlier one in this game three uh, but just able to get that zernis into the position in these two just to do what it does best and just sweep through the opponent's team my lord, what a comeback from Alejandro. Very well played there. As, uh, of course, I think people as well are saying in the chat, that is a very well-trained Xerneas there, Jamie. And uh, Alejandro was able to capitalize completely off of it. Like you did mention, it may have been a strategy that, of course, they were trying to implement. They knew that that survival was going to be so, so crucial that they intimidate, more importantly. And just basically go for all damage and it worked out very well for them there to the point where Sergio didn't have a way to come back since the Suicune just took so much damage and was just susceptible to getting KO'd just from one more attack from that Xerneas. Yeah, it was a very nice play coming out from Alejandro there. Uh, a lot of players do opt to run Xerneas, just max speed, maybe a tiny yep. bit of bulk, um, but then you can see how crucial the bulk comes into play there. 
And that Intimidate Down means it's able to survive one of the strongest attacks we know uh, yeah. from the Behemoth Blade, from the Zashian, and super, a super effective hit at that as well. Uh, so showing why bulk is very crucial onto the Xerneas. You don't really need too much speed investment if you are getting that plus two speed. You'll be able mm -hmm. to match some things in Tailwinds at some points, and that may come into play sometimes, uh, but then the bulk is going to come into play pretty much every game at that point, especially if you're able to survive attacks you really shouldn't be able to. Yeah, well, exactly that. So, of course, that was our second stream match of today. We do see um, uh, Chile being able to go ahead and get that win versus Bolivia in such a phenomenal show from Alejandro's side. Props, of course, to both those trainers for giving us such a spectacular show. But, of course, we are opting, uh, gonna go, sorry, for a very short break, but we will be right back for the next third match being between Netherlands and Vietnam. So don't go anywhere, and we'll catch you in a bit.